Welcome to another edition of Entrepreneurs in Fuego. This is a special show because it's the last show that we do for 2015. Oh, wow. So, but yeah, my goodness. So this is <laughs> this is it, man. So this is it. We're documenting the journey of entrepreneurs one digital footprint at a time. With me, I have Carmen Payne, mm -hmm. a life coach. Yes. How are you yes. doing, Carmen? I'm very well, thank you. You look a little nervous, man. Relax. <laughs> this is this is this is where you're supposed to be having fun. Sorry, man. I'm on the spot right now. <laughs> no, you, actually, no, actually, no, you're not. Look, uh, tell us a little bit about what you do. I am a life coach. My business is Soul Transformational Life Coaching. I've been in practice for about two years now. All right. Um, but I've been in the corporate world for 20 plus years. Oh my um, goodness, so what, what did you do in the corporate world? Uh, training, facilitating, mentoring, project management, those kind of areas. So that gave you the background to do yes. the life coaching? Yes. So I'm sure you've seen it all, man. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, so this show is about uh, you know, the stories of, of entrepreneurs and mm -hmm. what made us decide to jump from the corporate world into just being a solopreneur. So mm -hmm. what happened? In your case, how, how did that oh, In my about? case, well, I'm kind of still transitioning, to mm -hmm. be truthful. Um, but I kind of looked at my uh, where I was a couple of years ago in my career. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, is this truly feeding my soul? Is this really what I want to be doing? Um, because I was doing project management 100% of the time. And I incorporate as much as I can coaching, my coaching skills and, and my training skills into that role. Um, but I looked at my career at that point and I said to myself, this is not feeding my soul. I need to do something that feeds my soul and I don't want to help others um, on their journey and how they want to feed their own souls. So, so did, you, did you reach that point where you were just going through the motions anymore? Yes. And there yes. was no passion for what you Correct. originally uh, thought right. that was that's what it was you know yes. and you do it for so many years and then you just lose interest is that what happened pretty much yeah you actually hit the nail on the head I, I was thinking well I'm not feeling passionate about yeah. coming to work every day what used to make me feel passionate so I sat down and I looked at my resume and I thought well what have I done over the years that um, really made me feel passionate wanted, wanted right. me to get up out of bed in the morning right. and i looked at what i used to do which was training and mentoring and coaching and i said oh god i really loved that job i really really loved that job and that used to make me want to get out of bed go to work and 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 really um do that with 100 percent passion so when I realized this about myself and, and how it made me feel inside and how it lit up I became when I, when I real, came to that realization, I, I looked for, for ways for, well, how can I do that? How can I transition to doing that on a daily basis? So I went back to school and I became a certified life coach a couple of years ago, just to kind of get myself back in the game and, and refresh my skills in that area. And I've been doing it ever since. So I graduated in May 2013, and oh, I start, I'm building my practice. And uh, I've got private clients, and I run workshops, and I absolutely love it. I love it. it, it and it shows. <laughs> I mean, it, it really shows. I mean, you're, it, honestly, when your face lights up. When, when you start talking about corporate, you're like, oh, uh, yeah. you know, corporate world, this and that. And then when you're talking about your transition and what you did, yeah. you're like, you're, you know, there's yeah. another karma that shows up, you know, which is, which is terrific. So yeah. the, the, the move from the corporate world world. Mm -hmm. um, scary. Yes, it's very scary because it's secure. It gives you a regular paycheck. Right. You know, you've got medical benefits and all those kind of things. There's so many benefits to being in a corporate situation. And you meet a lot of people and you work with a lot of different diversity and stuff like that. But then going out on your own, you're really on your own. You know, your IT, your your marketing, your your sales, your, you know... Accountant. Your, 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 your brand, you know, you become your brand. And, and how you project that out there in the world is really important. Did you have a... Because we talked to a, lo a lot of entrepreneurs that, that have made that jump from corporate world to, uh, in, into being solopreneurs. One of the things that we that we talked about and they, and they pointed out to us is that a lot of the entrepreneurs that did this jump had a lot of support, right. uh, a great support system. Mm -hmm. Did you have that? Well, I would say that my my partner in life, my partner Joshua, is a great support system. Um, he is 100% behind what I want to do. Um, and without that push and without that support, and my family are really great. They love the fact that I'm, I'm going for this and I'm doing life coaching um, because, you know, I've done coaching in some capacity my entire life, even in my family. 
you know. Oh, really? So being the eldest child, you kind of get to be that person that people come to and, and ask for advice, or just naturally my friends would come to advice, ask me for advice, or I would just listen to their problems and guide them and things like that. So it's always been part of who I am. This is just really putting it out there and, and saying, hi, I can help you, I can coach you. Being, being a, um an entrepreneur employed for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, there is, there's kind of this misconception that, oh yeah, I can make my own hours, I have my Ferrari <laughs> right outside the door, <laughs> you know, things are just great, because I just, you know, I took this pill that says entrepreneur, and right. overnight it's a success. Well, we know that BS, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, you know, it isn't like that, or for, I mean, for some people, I'm sure it is. You know, if they get sponsors and backing, probably one in right? a million. Yeah, and so, um, but for me, you know, I still have to keep my paycheck coming in from my corporate world and be able to do this in addition to that, so um, so that I can still keep a roof over my head and build my practice and things like that. So, it's really not. Um, I do not have a Ferrari <laughs> outside and things like that. But you know, my life is rich in so many other ways because this really does feed my soul. This is my passion and I love to do this as much as I can. And that's what's cool about interviewing entrepreneurs such as yourself because you know, each one of us defines success in a much different passion or in a much different fashion, I'm sure. Uh, and I, I suppose it has to be kind of the same thing when you talk to the people that you coach, right? Because how do they define success? And you're and you're saying, well, how do you define success, mm -hmm. right? So it's got to be an, an incredible, an incredible challenge. Yes, yes, yeah, it is. It is an incredible challenge, but it's one. It's a challenge that I look forward to. You know, it's a challenge that I, I uh, grab with both hands and um, and. Uh, really love working with people to help them um, find, define what is success to them because right. it's not always money. Right. Sometimes exactly. it's love, sometimes it's having better relationships with people. You know, that, could, that in itself is success. Yeah. Um, being exactly. able to travel once a year, that can be success to somebody. Being able to overcome all the obstacles that they feel they have in their way and finding a way to navigate through those, that is success to some people. And, and that's what's really cool because you know that's that's one of the lessons that we're getting uh, from you today is that define success the way that you feel satisfied with. I mean, not the way that the rest of the world or the magazines or the media is mm -hmm. defining success for you. Not the Ferrari, the door. And perhaps that's how I define success. Yeah, I don't know. Right. But but it's just being being happy and satisfied with the life that you have. Right, exactly, yeah. Creating your own reality that means something to you that you want to wake up to every day. And that's the, the core of your teachings, right, is you create your own reality. Yes, exactly. Um, about your life, about uh, your business, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. What is your biggest challenge right now? And I know that you, you mentioned you wear a lot of hats, but uh, <laughs> as, as a businesswoman, as an entrepreneur, what is your biggest challenge right now? Uh, for me personally? Yeah. It's really um, finding avenues to create more client growth, um, getting more clients uh, to come to me. That is probably my biggest challenge. It's my marketing. I have a biggest challenge there. It uh, always, you know, <laughs> I, I can tell you, we've done over 100 and probably close to about 140, perhaps more interviews so far uh, this year since we started the show. And it always boils down to marketing sales. Mm -hmm. How do we, uh, increase the number of clients that we have, how do we um, grow? Mm -hmm. The moment you stop growing, really, you, you die, right? Well, you become stagnant, right? So what do you do for your clients, aside from word of mouth, which I'm sure you uh, have a lot. What do you mean, to gain clients? To gain clients. Um, I get clients through referrals a lot of the right. time. Is um, there a secret? Do you have a secret sauce? <laughs> Do you have a secret sauce you that you're going to share with us? Um, I don't know whether I have a secret sauce, <laughs> but I feel if people really resonate with you as a person, uh, as a coach, you know, the title coach kind of goes out the window because they feel like they have someone that they know that can help you, that you can help. And through referrals, I think is my biggest client gain. Um, and also in my network of people through my project management field, actually, I get clients through that field. And they were a client base that I didn't even consider 
uh, coaching, I'm like, why, why would I want to coach clients, you know, in um, that field when I do project management every day and I w wanted to get away from, from that. Right, right. You know, but what the saying goes, what you resist persists, right? So, <laughs> um, you know, I was getting clients through my project management field and right. then I, then some, you know, the universe said to me, come and open your eyes. Why are you shutting down these people when they need coaching just as much as anybody else, you know? So I've done workshops, career workshops, actually with project managers and engineers and and people in these different fields that I work with every day and that has been so tremendously rewarding for me and really uh, lessons learned I, I really learned a lot from these from doing that is it, is it hard to listen to your own advice <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, because you, you know, I'm stupid not to, right? I am. Well, you're I, a life coach, right? right. I mean, you've got so all this expertise, you've got education, you got the background. Right. I might as well give myself some advice. Right. So, yeah, absolutely, Francisco. <laughs> so, um, you know, when I actually took those blinkers off and those blinders off and I opened up my, my, my net to that world, it was just like, oh my goodness, what are you doing? Why are you trying to run away from that when really there's a lot of potential in that air, in 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 the network that you have in that field that could really benefit from you? And you know, and I'm I, I know exactly how they feel. I walk in their shoes. I talk in their shoes right. every day. You know, and so you know, it was really blind of me to not to not see that opportunity and now I have and, and I love working with these people. If you weren't doing life coaching, what would you be doing? Oh, I, th <laughs> I think I would be a dancer because I love to dance. Somehow I had dancer in my head. I, I <laughs> Believe me, if there was if there was uh, some kind of a pop up that we can mm -hmm. put over here, you yeah. can go back about 10 seconds ago and it would be she's going to be a dancer. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had so it. you're using your intuition then, I right? I have my intuition. Yeah? yeah okay. I, 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 honestly, yeah. I was going to say a dancer. A dancer. Oh, yeah. I know. I love to dance. I like, I've been do, taking tango lessons in the past, and I love, 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 love to dance. Tango, the most difficult dance in the world. <laughs> I, tell you what, I, I tell you what, I've tried it. Coming from South America, I've tried it. No, I got two left feet when it comes to tango. <laughs> but anyway. But we, we can all be trained, right? <laughs> we can all be we, trained. We, we can only hope. Yes, that's right, right? Happy New Year. We wish Happy you the best New for Year 2016. To you, Francisco. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. See, you're a natural man, and it's <laughs> just perfect. And I learned a lot about you. You're a dancer. That's it. And you're a life coach. And you have passion for things. And with that, thank you very much for coming thank in. Thank you. We're out.